Good morning all. Time to open some post, which is in this bin. It is therefore Julian's post bin. So let's start with this one. And oh, that didn't make much of an impact on this bag at all, did it? It's that. I think there are two things in here. And they are two little power bank PCBs. Uh, now both of these should have USB-C and in the case of these two boards it's uh, an input and an output so this is power delivery. Now I'm pretty sure that all the clever stuff related to power delivery, the voltages, that sort of thing, the protocol, the communication is done in this chip. So first of all let's take a look at the chips on these two boards. See if I can get in on this one. Okay, yeah, so that one is a W332. And this one is an SW6106, I think that says. Now, I've just noticed that the soldering on the USB Type-C socket on this board <laughs> is absolutely horrid. So let's get in and try and get a closer look at that. Uh, lighting is a problem but I think you can see balls of solder in fact it doesn't look like the solder was flowed very well but that's horrific I don't think there are any shorts there but it's just horrible I'm tempted to reflow that with my iron even before I power this one up I'll start with some flux I think there's some in here okay let's try and rework that I'm not sure how close i'll be able to get the camera so i'll start just by running that up and down but i can't really see what i'm doing so i have to now just inspect it and see what i've done well that was not easy <laughs> that's right at the limit of what you can do with a soldering iron on such tiny connections but I think those are all flat now. I mean, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so I guess we're going to have to try it. So it's going to go on here. Now, this is the one that I already have a board on, but this board proved to take the voltage of these cells, they're all in parallel, uh, too high, over 4.3 volts. So I don't want to use that, but I quite like to leave it on because it's got that percentage indicator. Now, if I charge these cells with a completely separate board, is this uh, percentage indicator going to say anything sensible? Quite possibly not. But I'll get this on here and we'll just see if this uh, works from the point of view of doing a bit of charging. Now charging, I don't know. I think there's some spec on these chips. Um, I might have a look at that later. But I'll just, um, in the first instance, use this which is a type A to type C. So I'll just put five volts in there and charge these uh, five down to 3.7 through this, well, the charge control part of this chip, I assume. Take off this bridging strip and I'm gonna replace it with these ones that have this sort of wire end. I may need to drill into that. These holes are quite close together on here uh so it may be right at the end of this i don't know yet i'll see i thought you'd like to see this bit where i attach this to the battery just in case i've done something horribly wrong and we've got a flashing blue led so that looks pretty good right i just have to glue this down not glue obviously which i'm just going to do very crudely by placing that on there and putting my iron on the top. And the same with that one. And how well that's fixed on, I don't know. Right, press the button and the flashing blue LED would imply that this board thinks that the uh, battery voltage is low. That's kind of borne out with this thing, which says that it's uh, what's well, flashing also says it's low and at eight percent not that that means a lot uh okay let's plug this into there and see if we can charge this up 
Turned off the overhead lighting. It's extremely dull day today. Right, let's switch this on. That does a four light ascending sequence and now it's flashing the second blue LED. So that does look promising from a charging it up point of view. What's this thing now saying? Uh, still 8%. But like I say, if uh, there's this may be a coulometric counter in that it's counting what goes through this board. Uh, so if, if the energy is coming from a different source, this may not respond. Apart from the fact that when we get up to higher voltages, this may just sort of say that can't be right. I'll recalibrate. We'll see. So this is the listing from which I bought those two boards. And in fact, they're the top two boards on this image. There's the W332 and there's the S1, uh, SW6106. So let's select the W332 first. That one is 599, uh, 99 cents shipping. Now I think the shipping is combined if you buy two. And that came from Motorhouse. Let's select the other one, the SW6106, uh, 6.99. Again, 99 shipping, but I think they were combined. I can't remember, to be honest. But let's take a look at the specs of these two boards. I don't know why I didn't choose the, th choose the third one. There was a reason. Uh, it's probably down to the specs. Yes, this seller gives a fair bit of information on these three boards. So if we look at the uh, W332. Uh, output PD, fast output QC 3.0. I think that's a bit confused. But the output can be 5 volt 3.1 amp, 9 volt 2 amp, 12 volt 1.5 amp. Uh, SW6106, uh, type C output, 5 volt 3 amp, 9 volt 2 amp, 12 volt 1.5 amp, compatible with PD fast charge. Is this one compatible? Yeah, because it says here uh, W332. Now the mainstream fast charging chargers all use W332 bidirectional PD QC3 fast charging. This one also has QC3. I've got a feeling this one didn't. Uh, input type C support protocol fast charging input type C. But I don't think it says anything about type C output. So I don't think that one's bidirectional. But it's hard to tell. <laughs> from this stuff. Oh, there is a chart here, actually. Uh, does it say anything about bi-directional? Um, it's hard to tell. Have a look. Have a look at that chart and see what you think. OK, let's move on. And uh, this one's a bit of a giveaway because I've written on it PD trigger. And that's one of these little boards that allows you to press some buttons when it's plugged into power delivery. Ooh, I think there may be an issue here. And it's nothing to do with this board. It's the fact that I don't have a type C to type C cable. So I'm not sure I can even check this thing. But anyway, it's one of these uh, power delivery triggers. You press the button, press and hold the button, double click maybe. Lots of options on here. And you can set the output voltage on here and I think there's an LED which lights up different colors. Now, do I have a buy a type C at both ends cable? I wonder if I can borrow one. No, I don't think we have one in the house. I'm going to have to buy one. But we can take a look at this thing just visually. Uh, it says on it, it's a YZX Studio. They make a lot of the uh, power measuring uh, devices, but they also do these triggers. This one is a ZY12PDN. And like I say, on it, you've got a switch and I think a multicolor LED just to the left of the switch there. Um, there's an ST microcontroller there, which probably does all the clever stuff. Well, responding to the switch and setting the color of the LED, you can see a bunch of resistors up there near the LED. So that's probably for the R, G, and B components of the color you get. Now that little chip there next to the type C socket, gosh that's small isn't it? I can't even read that. Well I think it says PBAA. I might briefly look, there's no point looking up the microcontroller, that just have a standard set of instructions in it. But what's that PBAA chip? Well I typed in PBAA USB and this came up 
It's a Fuzz B302 programmable USB Type C controller with PD. Um, it does show the chip as being, <laughs> if I scroll back, um, well, there's a BGA type, which is this, but there's also this 4343 pin arrangement, and that appears to be the chip that's on this board. So it certainly would appear to be this. And then um, with the uh, microcontroller sitting next to it, because this is appears to be an I squared C device, uh, that will just set this up, talk to it. So the point is, with the block of cells, this isn't actually the one. It's over there charging. Uh, this is actually a, a 4S pack. But anyway, with a single um, parallel pack and one of these boards, uh, a cable which has USB Type-C at each end. And I'm just wondering whether I could get one of those at the pound shop or something. I might um, pop into town later. And then this power delivery board, it should be possible to coax the PD chip. Uh, no, it would be the chip on the board to boost not to 5 volts, but to 9 or 12. And PD also has 20 volts as an option, but these boards don't have that. So yes, it should be possible for this device to send commands down the USB and tell this device that we don't want 5 volt USB, we want 9 or 12 volt USB, but I'm gonna to have to come back and do that as a separate video. I would do anyway. This is Poe's bag. Let's get on with the next item. Well, lots of people have this uh, ZY12 PDN. The seller I bought it from doesn't sell it anymore. Um, but here's a seller that I'm familiar with, Satisfy Electronics. They have the ZY12 PDN bare board, which is the one I've got for five dollars and 33 cents there is a one dollar 18 uh shipping charge what would that be would that be one euro or perhaps one pound yeah i don't know why 118 is an odd number uh so that's where you could get it right next up this one now in this post bag um post bin sorry i should say um i'm basically opening up stuff that I need uh, to use and to make videos on. So it's all it's all power related actually um, this time round. So this is I think a boost converter but it is a little bit interesting. Yes this one is a boost converter. That's interesting. Uh, that fell enough but then it hasn't had its thing peeled. Actually that might be best left off for the time being so we can see what's going on on here. What's interesting about this one, um, it looks like it's a boost with CC and CV and there is indeed a current measuring uh, shunt there. This one goes down to a very low voltage on the input. It says that it can go down to two volts and boost that up. Now I don't know what the current is at that two volts um, I think it can go down to 2 volts, but it works better at 3 volts. I think that was in the listing. So some of the uses for this. Now the main use, again, um, this is not an all parallel pack, but assume it is, is to boost from the sort of typically 3.7 volts, but could be as low as 3 volts from lithium cells up to something like 5 volts. This USB, incidentally, is simply connected to the output so if you adjust the voltage pot for something other than 5 volts, you don't want to be using that USB. Maybe that's why they did it orange. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, they, they, there is a warning. Don't uh, Be careful. Set this for 5 volts if you want 5 volts. But bear in mind it could be anything. It could be, I don't know, 20. We'll have a look at the spec of this in a moment. But um, the other thing you could use, of course... Oh, I have one here. One of my dud ones. Um, a supercapacitor you could extract the last little bit of energy uh, from the bottom range of the voltage of a SuperCat. So my SuperCat Bluetooth speaker, the amplifier only runs down to 6.3 volts. This could allow the caps, and that would be caps in series, to run down to two volts and still produce an output at the output of this thing, which would run that audio amplifier. But you've got to bear in mind that um, the energy in a capacitor, I think, varies with voltage squared. Isn't it half CV squared? So the amount of energy in the capacitor 
below six volts and bear in mind we're talking about six volts with six of these racked up in parallel down to two volts is probably actually very small you probably find this doesn't do anything uh, very useful in that respect but it's an interesting device nonetheless and uh, yeah I thought I'd get it in and take a look at it now this will probably have a wattage figure I don't know 100 watts or something You've got to bear in mind that that wattage figure only works when you're using the maximum possible input and the maximum possible output. Um, so this device's main feature is that the input goes down to an extremely low voltage. You won't get the wattage figure that they quote. Perhaps we should go straight to eBay, take a look at what the specs of this thing are, and then come back after that. So here's the item I bought uh, on eBay. This is a DC-DC step-up boost converter, boost only. 2 to 20 volts, uh, 24 volts on the input, uh, 80 watts, up to 80 watts, up to 4 amps on the output, that's what that means because I've just read the text, 3 to 30 volts, uh, CC, CV, yeah, 3 to 30 volts on the output, constant current, constant voltage, adjustable power module. So this was $4.52, there is a 118 again. Uh, shipping charge and this one came from King Electronics 15 and the description below is quite good um, it says Spe special architecture support 2 volt low voltage input no fear of low voltage especially suitable for 18650 high power boosting the power is large the input current can be up to 15 amps the output current can be up to 4 amps so when the input is uh, 3.7 volts the output power can reach 45 watts. When the input is 12 volts, the output power can reach that 80 watt figure. Um, now they do warn against the USB, but I can't find where that is. Um, yes, output voltage is three to 30 volts. Pay attention to the USB port and the output port directly connected is the adjustable voltage, three to 30 volts, not specifically a five volt port. It's the, on the USB, it'll be the same as what's on the uh, terminal block connector there. Lots more information down here. But yes, yeah, it certainly seems that uh, at 2 volt input, can we get that 15 amps? That would be 30 watts. Uh, the input current can be up to 15 amps. Output voltage is 3 to 30. So yeah, it does seem that the input voltage is 2 to 24. I thought there was a thing saying... Well, it's sort of 2 to 24, but really it's not. It's 3, but maybe not. OK, let's take a little look at this board. Now, this big chip here um, just has 324 written on it. I think it's that way up. And I think it's an LM324. So it's just a quad op amp, I think. The controller chip is that little one there. And it is an FP... Uh, I've got the data sheet up, I can't read it. FP5139. So that's the boost controller chip. We'll take a look at that data sheet. Um, otherwise, there's a dual diode there. It actually has the symbol of a dual diode on it. And I believe these are a couple of MOSFETs. Um, what's that say? An NCE, is it? 4060? Yeah, NCE 4060 MOSFET. Uh, almost certainly N channel. I will check. So this chip, FP5139 from Feeling Technology. Uh, boost topology switching regulator control IC wide supply voltage range 1.8 to 15 volts on the input. Uh, Turning pole output with adjustable on-off current for MPN. <laughs> MPN or N-channel MOSFET, which makes the MOSFET almost certainly N-channel. And there it is, the NCE4060 N-channel enhancement mode power MOSFET. And lots more stuff in this data sheet besides. But anyway, that gives us the uh, information we wanted, which is that the input voltage can go down to 1.8 volts. There's the input fuse. I can't read it very well. It's a bit hidden behind the terminal block. But I'm assuming that's what gives it the 15 amp limit. Uh, that's just a soldered in fuse. Inductor, some capacitors. Are they nice ones? Well, they just say low ESR. It's hard to say whether they're good. So if I find the 
brand name. Okay, they're Chang Zin. Would we expect anything else? Um, once again, I will put this through its paces in another video. I want to get some through some more um, envelopes, and they're all power related, actually. Okay, let's do this one. <laughs> it's nice oh, getting worse and worse. Well, this is one of these active balancers. It's on an enormous board. I don't know why the board's so big, because I've got active balancers for, this one is for six cells, so there are five circuit elements, uh, seven connectors, and a seven-way JST cable, five LEDs, one for each of these circuits. It's just very large, isn't it? The reason that's a problem for me is because this is for the vacuum cleaner battery, which I did a very brief video on on my other channel, Julian's Shorts, um, of balancing up the cells in that. And it did work, but it didn't last for very long. So what I want to do is put this actually inside the battery. There is a bit of space in there. Actually, let me see if I can get the battery. Yeah, it's this thing, um, which was in a Lidl vacuum cleaner one of those sort of stick vacuum cleaners um it's 22 volts i believe um yeah lithium arm battery pack 22.2 volts that'll be a multiple six multiple of uh, 3.7 i'm guessing 2400 milliamp hours uh the suzao shiny home appliance yeah well shiny when you vacuumed it now i suspect that what's actually wrong with this thing I will open this actually, um, is a dead cell, but this is the next step in the evolution of fixing this. I'm going to embed this inside. I've got a feeling this was about £11 though, so it added to the cost of this battery. Yeah, I'll just open it up. These are the Torx screws and these are the regular uh, posi drives. So this is the battery pack. Now there is space in here, but I don't know, it's not a lot. That's not going to fit in there, is it? Oh, well, I'll have to have a think about that. But uh, this comes out nice and easily. Now, I don't believe there's any balancing on here. I think I decided there wasn't balancing. Uh, this looks like it's the cell voltage measuring chip, although I can't be sure about that. Uh, there is a... Where is it? Somewhere... Where was it? It's on, on here. Oh, it's up here. Oh right, okay, there are some LEDs on here um, which indicate how full it is. It's six um, lithium-ion cells. Can't see what brand they are at the moment. Uh, it just says they're SW18650-25. HP. So are they 2.5 amp hours? What did this thing say again? Oh, 2,400 milliamp hours. Yeah, so they're probably 24 or 25, uh, 2.5 or 2.4 amp hour. Interesting that they fitted six in a carrier that's clearly designed for eight. Now, can I somehow squeeze that in there? This is why it's a rather odd thing that this is so wide. I don't know whether this could be cut down. It probably could, actually. You'd be interfering with these large copper areas which I don't think do a lot. So yeah, it might be necessary to cut this, the sides off this. Um, I'd need to check whether there are any vias on these outside edges. But uh, <laughs> yes, that would really mess this board up, wouldn't it? Yeah, it does seem a shame to cut this down. I think it's possible because the vias are quite far in. So I could take a quarter of an inch off there, quarter of an inch off there, about six millimeters. Um, but before I do that, interesting to read this. This is a 6S NCM or LFP. Oh, so that's what, what's that? Nickel, cobalt, manganese or lithium ion phosphate. Could it do lithium ion phosphate as well? Yes, because all it's trying to do is um, get the cell voltages all the same. So yes, this would work just as well for LFP. That's interesting. Uh, battery balancing V1.1. You've got the sizes there and designed by, and some stuff in Chinese. Okay, let's take a look at this on eBay. So this is the item. It's 3S, 4S, 6S, 10S, up to 17S actually, 
lithium-ion or LifePo4 LFP battery active equalizer. It's not really a BMS, it's just um, an active balancer, 1.2 amps. Now that's probably a very uh, optimistic figure. It's probably 1.2 uh, in the case where it's boosting and bucking the least, so when the cells are very close together. That's my guess. I can't remember. There's some issue with that current rating. So they do um, 2S, 3S, uh, 3S, sorry, or 2S to 3S, which will have two modules for three cells. Uh, yes, and it just, you can't see this, but it increments all the way up in single step. So you can get any size you want. Now, what's interesting is that that one, which has four modules, so that's a 5S, is very narrow. That one is very narrow, three modules on that one. And that one has two modules, that's for 3S. Why then suddenly is this one enormous? But there it is. Um, $12.19 for the 6S. What's the 3S? $7.85. But let's go back to the one I actually bought. The 6S. Incidentally, if I've got a 7S, which would work for six cells, would it be any narrower? No, I think they all go big at that stage. Interesting. Okay, let's go back to 6S. Uh, free shipping, this one, and I got these from, or this one from Electronic Mall. And uh, I'll just put these screws back in, but I am going to open one more because I want it open um, for an upcoming project video. And this one is, <laughs> is in a fully reflective silver envelope. It says machinery parts, but that's a bit vague, isn't it? I think there's nothing at this end which will be destroyed when I cut into it. It is that. And it's this. It's literally a uh, single out, uh, voltage out power supply, mains power supply. So that's in AC, L for live and neutral, although I don't suppose it matters which way round those two are. They will go through that fuse. Uh, class X or possibly Y, probably class X capacitor, so that's probably directly across the AC input, common mode choke into the big uh, high voltage capacitor. We'll have a look at the value of that in a moment. Uh, there'll be a bridge rectifier on here somewhere. There it is. It's on the front there, four pins. So what that does is it turns your AC into high voltage DC. Then there'll be a chip which chops that up very quickly because you want to get it through this relatively small uh, transformer. And then there's some gubbins on the output side which uh, regulates and smooths that to your output voltage. This, I believe, is a 12 volt uh, board. Now there should be a feedback opto isolator which is there. So that's how I got a feeling that the the regulator chip here varies its pulse width modulation in order to keep the output voltage constant, but it's a full feedback control loop. There's the class. Well, I don't quite know what class it is, but it's a capacitor that sits across the uh, completely isolated output side and the uh, input main side. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of that is. Is it to sort of stop one drifting wildly away from the other, I can't remember, um, but I've got a feeling that's the capacitor responsible for that tingly feeling you get when you touch the uh, the output side, even though it's completely isolated. You do have a little bit of current which will flow through there, um, but of course capacitor is just two plates, so you can think of that as isolation as well. So your isolation components are the transformer, galvanically isolated, the opto isolator of course, and that capacitor, interesting. So what's this for? Well, it's actually for my audio projects because they need a range of power supplies. The vocoder is a particular case in point because it needs a moderate amount of 12 volt, the same amount of current, and we're talking a, a, not, not that moderate. I'm thinking now two amps of plus 12 volts, two amps of minus 12 volts, and I don't know, maybe three amps of five volts. So what I'm planning to do is get three of these power supplies, one to do plus 12 volts, another one to do minus 12 volts. And of course, the nice thing about this is even if all the inputs are paralleled up, um, the outputs can be seriesed 
because they're completely isolated, you can put one of the 12 volts and stack it with the other one, which will give you either 24 volts in total or minus 12 with a zero point and plus 12. Then I'll have a five volt power supply as well. Um, I have got another one of these power supplies. This one is actually a dual five volt, 12 volt, but I don't think it's particularly high current. We have seen this used before, but that's the idea to have three power supplies plus 12, minus 12, and five, and then put, well, mains, but you don't have to put mains into these things. You can actually put DC in, because there's nothing to stop you putting DC in and having the bridge rectifier rectify it to DC, depending on which way you connect it. Of course, the rectifier might flip it, or it might uh, just let it through with the same polarity. Of course, you've got diode drops there. But uh, yeah, these things are rated for both AC and DC on the input. And they say things like, I've got a feeling this one was 85 AC is the lowest, up to 240 AC, of course, or they're probably spec'd for higher than that. It might be 260 or something, I can't remember. Um, and 110 DC. But this one comes on at a surprisingly low DC voltage. I think it comes on at 32 volts DC. It may not be very stable at that voltage, but it comes on. So I'd like to try this one. I think I might move that wire over to here. Uh, I might even move that bulb over to here because this is a 12 volt, two amp unit and see what voltage this does actually come on when given a DC uh, input. Let's try it. Okay, let's see. Let's take this cable out and see what voltage this comes on at. And that means that I don't have to drive um, my complex analog project, which has three power rails from AC. I can drive it from DC by using a boost converter, um, a bit like that one we saw earlier, although I'd probably go for one with a control panel and display. So if you raise the uh, DC input voltage up to, I don't know, something like 50 or 60 volts, which those boost converters can very easily do, maybe not that one we saw earlier, but the um, digitally controlled ones. Oh, that's the door. Right, let's give this a try. I've set the power supply to 50 volts, one amp. Um, this may not come on at 50 volts DC, of course, it might need to be higher, but this goes up to, can't remember, 90 volts, I think. There's a little LED here, so we should see this come on. Now I'm, I'm using um, the BSC400 because it has the very slow output rise time, which is normally a real pain, but in this case, it will enable us to see at what voltage um, this thing comes on. So let's give it a try and switch it on. There goes the voltage. Uh, so 20 volts, nothing here yet. 25. Now, as I say, this one came on at about 32. Oh, and that one flickered then. 34, 36, 40. That's interesting. I wonder if that killed it. Oh no, it's pulsing. Well, it's clearly not happy with 50 volts, so we'll have to go a bit further. Actually, this one tops out at 80 volts, so let's go for 80 volts. I wonder if that'll flicker again at around 30 something volts. And then I'll shut up and speed this up because you don't want to watch this at this speed. Okay, 30 volts. Yes, the first pulse at the low 30s, but it hasn't come on. And it's come on and stabilised at something over 70 volts. How much current you could draw with that input voltage, I don't know. But that'll be the sort of thing that'll be fun to find out in the future. But certainly it seems to be on and stable with 80 volts DC going in. I'll just get a DVM and check that there is 12 volts coming out. Okay, output connections are there. Make sure I've got these not in the 10 amp. Don't want to short it. 12.2 uh, volts. Got those the wrong way around, so let's put them the right way around. Positive is on the left. Yeah, so that's providing 12.2 volts. Uh, without loading it, of course, I don't know how stable it'll be with 80 volts going in, but certainly it seems to be running. 
Uh, right, so switch that off. The voltage will collapse down and that will go off like so. So this is the seller uh, listing that I bought from ACDC 110 volt, 120, 220, 230 to 5 or 12 or 24. And this is the uh, DC 12 volt, 2 amp, so 25 watt. I think if you go for the 24 volt, 2 amp, it's an altogether bigger thing. Yeah, you can see heat sinks on there and stuff. Let's put it back to the one I bought. They also do the uh, 5 volt, 2 amp, which is 10 watts, of course. 12 volt, 2 amp. So that was uh, $4.98. It's a basic uh, AC in, or of course you can do DC. Um, single supply out, power supply. There is a 99 cents shipping in addition to that. And I got this one from Motorhouse. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, big thanks as always to my sponsor, JLC PCB. And also a big thanks to my patrons. If you'd like to become one, you can click this link here. There are another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, why not? You can subscribe by clicking this link here. Cheerio.